What do the best players do when they see this as an attacker? Well, they use it to their advantage, like most people would. But how? How do, the, how do you use a single reinforcement to your advantage? Well, as an attacker, if this server hatch is reinforced, you can play in server and the defenders can only come from two different ways, pushing through the bomb site or coming from blue stairs. So if you can clear out the defenders in this area using the dirt tunnel, then you're pretty much good to set up the round for a plant and win the round. So by taking server, you can then come hold control of blue stairs, you clear out anybody playing in the A site, and then you plant the bomb on the default spot. All the while, you have someone holding your blue flank, and you're pretty much set up to win the round. Obviously, this is not great for the defenders, so as a defender, you'll want to open this hatch. The attackers then have to worry about any roamers coming and shooting them from above in the hatch, rather than just flanking them from the blue stairs. So now the, the attackers not only have to worry about someone at the top of square looking down through the hatch shooting on them, or somebody in square looking down on holding dirt tunnel, etc, etc. So now it's not only harder to actually take that room, but it's harder to actually hold it safely. So opening up this server hatch is going to be a beautiful way to improve your defenses. So that's just opening one hatch that can drastically change the outcome of a round. But there's way more things you can do to set up your defenses better on bank in order to win more defenses on bank. So I went ahead and did all the default reinforcements on the basement, but now let's talk about what you're actually going to make as your smoke player, your mutant player, your shotgun player in order to set these sites up a little bit better. So you'll make this vaultable rotate in the red wall. Now the reason you want to make this vaultable is so that you can crouch behind it and use your smokes to stop the default plant. So it gives you a little bit of cover to actually throw your smokes from this area, just a little safer, just a little easier. Now the other reason you'll want to make this vaultable is because if you actually have to retake and push up through here, if you're crouching down through a rotate, it's a lot easier to hold it from the site hatch if the attackers have established presence up here. So if they've opened this hatch and you actually want to push up and take this room, vaulting through it actually hides you a lot better and gives you a better advantage in the gunfight rather than crouching through a hole and coming in at this slow speed that they're already going to be watching ahead of time. If you notice midway through the round they aren't opening the hatch, it's probably better off to make this uh, sprintable rotate or just one that you don't have the vault through because it will be safer to push through it while fighting these guys rather than vaulting through while fighting these guys on the breach. So if you notice they're not going to open this hatch maybe midway through the round, then maybe just make that sprintable. The next thing you're going to do is actually open up this garage wall. Now, a lot of people reinforce this garage wall and give up garage control, which is a no. Stop doing that. Stop giving up garage control for free. Garage is one of the best spots to hold on this site, and this is why. So if you make these holes in the red wall and these holes in the garage wall, you can actually have a player here like an Echo or really anyone with a 1.5, and you can hold this pixel angle on the default plan. You can actually see the planner if they're planning backwards on the breach, and you can actually tap them and kill them as they're planning. So getting and keeping garage control is super important just for the fact that it makes it a lot easier to stop the plant. But when attackers have this control, it also gives you a lot less root room to breathe a lot less room to move around so if you're keeping garage control playing those holes then you are just better set up to stop the plant and make it much more difficult for the attackers to actually get that bomb down that is also one of the reasons why i like to put my shield in garage here so with this shield you can hold this angle onto the entrance in the garage so again your 1.5 players typically a guy that'll be playing here you can hold this angle you can just peek off the shield if they do end up pushing in or they get to the police car um, and this is just a nice shield to have that will help you get garage control. It's really far away from here, so it's going to be really, really difficult for an attacker to actually destroy this with a grenade or an ash charge or whatever. Now, ash uh, and Zofia are going to be the easiest way to get this shield, um, but anyone with nades is going to have to make an absolute yeet to clear it. Okay, so you've set everything up for server side. You're pretty much good to go over there. And one other thing is opening up this wall as well is is always just a good move. That way you can get between red and uh, the B bomb site. Now what I like to do is open this wall all the way up, like this kind of thing. And then what you can do is you can have a player actually stand behind this B bomb and see the server door. Now you can also have like a Tachanka play here and he can use his fires and bank it off the reinforcement to actually stop the default plant. So you'll see sometimes a Tachanka playing back here and using his fire for the plant over there. So this is a really, really good site for Tachanka. I don't think Tachanka is amazing on every site by any means, but this is one of the sites that he actually thrives in. Next up, you're going to want to set up a little bit for the back take. So you'll make some footholds here and you'll make some kind of slightly above head holes on this wall. 
And what this will allow you to do is actually see the feet of any attackers trying to push down the main stairs. This is a super defender favorite gunfight. The attacker would literally have to prone into this angle. In that case, you just shoot him in the face because he's moving so slow. And then these footholds allow you to watch the vault entrance door. So you'll see their feet on the vault there as they push in. You can play it even back here the same way. So when you see that they push in through the vault, they either have to prone into this angle, which is going to be super favored for you, or they run through the room and you spray them through the wall you get some damage off maybe you headshot them maybe kill them uh but that's just another little thing to set up that will help you out so that's it for the sight holes uh not too complicated but a little more setup than your typical site i would say so if you're that shotgun player this is be a good thing to memorize and just get used to and now let's talk about the reinforcements for the site so reinforcing these two server walls just makes sense in my opinion and then you have this red wall which is super important because this is the only wall that can't be seen from the hatch now if the attackers took open and you're playing on a reinforcement here, they can shoot you from that open hatch. So reinforcing this red wall is really the safest way to do it. And then you can throw your smokes from here as well to stop that default plant like I mentioned before. So those are your first three walls. And then you want to get these two walls. These just give you a little bit of extra cover if they are doing that backside take. So you can kind of peek off this reinforcement if you need to. Uh, this one is a good place to sit just if they are pushing like the elevator and vault at the same time. It just gives you that extra cover. So that puts our count up to five. Some people will reinforce off this garage wall, so you kind of have to be careful for that. So that's the reason we kind of have an extra wall in this as well. And then you'll get your elevator hatch, which puts you up to six, your lobby hatch, which puts you up to seven, and then the two open area hatches, which put you up to eight and nine. I actually personally like getting these ones as smoke because what I can do afterwards is open up these top floor hatches, which create a ton of pressure on attackers if they are trying to take open. They then have to they then have to clear the entire map in order to take this room safely without being worried about a defender lurking above. Sometimes I'll just sit here on a roam with Vigil with this hatch open. They don't even notice sometimes. I'll just kill the hard breacher. And that's a great way to relieve pressure on site and help out my teammates a lot just by getting one kill, right? So opening up these hatches doesn't do any harm to you and it puts pressure on the attackers which is something you always want to be trying and doing you can then make your way into square and open up this square hatch like we talked about before so you'll not want to reinforce this and that will leave you with one reinforcement now typically you'll have teammates who reinforce the wrong stuff so leaving that extra wall for like the garage wall sometimes your teammates will get um or you can use it upstairs as a roamer if you want on like the open single wall which is this wall as i'm referring to but that's going to be your basic default setup for the basement bomb site moving up a couple floors we will hit the ceo bomb site wow beautiful so what you want to do off the bat is extend your defense out into this janitor area this will kind of make the top floor come full circle as you can see you can rotate through all four rooms now and that's just going to allow you as a defender a little more room to to breathe a little more room to move and then if they wherever they're kind of pushing from you can adjust yourself using these rotates so making these is just step one to success also Holding janitor is important because of how much control you can gain from getting control of this room. Uh, sometimes people will put their shield in here with some ADSs to hold this door, but this is a great spot to play with your shotgun just in general. So the next thing you want to do is reinforce off this trump wall and make some middle to knee level holes on the wall. What this is good for is one, you can either kind of peek off this and watch the push-up spiral, or you can actually put a shield here in long desk and use that to hold the push-up spiral as well. You do have to be careful because they can't get on that lobby repel and look through, but this is a good way to contest people that are doing that lobby take. If you play it smart, you play it passive off the shield or off the reinforcement. You can even play like a passive angle like this. Then this is a really nice way to kind of hold that spiral push. Making some shotgun holes in the floor here is also just a nice way to make the attackers a little more uncomfortable while they're going for that plant. So if they want to plant, you know, so they're not exposed to any of the rotates or anything in sight, they'll have to plant in a spot like this or behind the chair or on the bomb. So making the holes here makes it so that they're a little more uncomfortable going for that plant. And if they don't clear underneath and say you have a roamer underneath, then your roamer can actually stop the plant from under there as well without even the need for a C4 or impact or pulse scanner, I guess. So that way they can just look up, shoot them through the floor, and they can actually be on any operator to stop the plant. So now let's talk about reinforcements. You want to get the two CEO walls here, as well as the other two CEO walls. So the four CEO walls 
you'll want a wall here on janitor just for your janitor player either you can put it here or in the corner but what i like to do is put it here and then kind of hold the door like this that will just protect them from the windows so you have the five reinforcements there of course the wall on trump puts you at six one here for seven and the two elevator walls will put you at eight and nine which leaves you with one wall left now again this wall can change it up depending on what you want you could do two of the janitor walls you could put one on the stock door here and then you could put a shield in the hallway to face um square and then you could have like a wamai or a jaeger play here to protect the shield and hold this hallway this is a great spot to sit especially if you have this wall reinforced the one other thing is you should make some footholds along here as well because that'll actually allow your janitor player to watch the hop in a little better on on stock so he can kind of support this guy by shooting them in stock and then it makes the attackers a little more uncomfortable jumping in here if they see these footholds They're like ah well i don't really want to hop in there because they might blow my feet off or shoot me in the head through the wall the one other thing you will want to do on the ceo bomb site is make sure you barricade off all these windows because as an attacker you can get on a lot of repels over here and look through the windows so at least if you barricade them up and they shoot them down you will know 100 there is someone on those repels so you know to avoid it but if you're kind of just waltzing around the top floor and you have no kind of idea that there's a guy in that repel he might just shoot you in the side of the head because you are just not not aware you just don't have that info so the barricades here actually just give you info and castle is great on this site as well um, because you can castle off these windows you can castle off one of these windows um, you can even castle off this door and open up square and make head holes along here to look into the square entrance which some people do that's a more advanced setup but for default purposes these are just kind of going to be the walls you want to get so the next bomb site we have is the open area now there's two different ways to hold this bomb site and the teller's bomb site which is the other site on this floor you can either extend out through archives by making rotates in here and then holding this area as well as the open area and almost holding open from this area so that's one way to do it on either of the sites so we'll talk about a bunker for open and then we'll talk about the extension for tellers but if you reverse the two you can hold both kind of the same way so because we are talking about the bunker for this site we're actually going to reinforce off the archives walls to the small office so now that that's done this bunker is very, very straightforward. You'll want to grab the two hatches as well, and then the four walls to kitchen from open uh, square. Sorry, not open area. Brain, brain fart. So that you put your reinforcement counter up to nine, right? You have the three walls here, the four here, the two hatches. You're at nine. You got one wall left. And this wall is going to be probably your next best wall to get because it will cut off a lot of angles that the attackers can get from outside this open area window. So reinforcements are very straightforward. Pretty much the just walls into the bomb site the next thing you'll need to set up though is the rotates and the holes that will give you those advantages for the attackers so right off the bat you'll want to make these footholds for the window because if those footholds aren't there and the attackers notice that all they need to do is throw a grenade here throw a smoke here or whatever and hop in the window and then they'll have this control where they can actually put a ton of direct pressure onto site so make sure you make these footholds just allows you to watch the hop in if there is an attacker that comes to that outer window the next thing you kind of want to do is make another avenue into the bomb site besides this double door now the thing about this double door is if the attackers come above and actually make these holes they can watch you push this double door by holding an angle from just the floor right here so you'll need another way to kind of get through that which is why making this rotate here is a lot better option than the using the double door you do have to be careful though the attackers can get an angle if they make a hole on the on the softball there which is why you have another option which is this rotate in small office to kitchen as well so this one they actually can't get an angle on from the window you can make it crouchable or you could open up the top and make it vaultable and that's honestly kind of it for this site for for holes the only other thing you will want to do is open up this hatch as a way to leave the site because there are only two doors to the site so if you have a bunch of people on site and you're just completely pinned down flanking has to be an option so the flank is going to come from this hatch or you could do it from the other hatch as well now if there's an attacker down there you might just get shot in the face if they're waiting for you or they're ready for it so usually opening these hatches late to go for the flank is the way to do it um or just being aware that you know they could be down here and maybe you only want to flank in like dire circumstances one last thing you'll also want to do is make these holes above the 
kitchen wall. This angle here allows you to see the square stairs from up on that table. We can vault up here and there's the, there's the square stairs. So you can actually see attackers walking down here. Now, this is a lot better to do with someone whose gun isn't as hard to control as the SMG-11. So like an Echo or a Maestro or a castle ump or whatever it may be. Castle's another great option for this site just so you can castle off the doorways as well, make it a little bit more difficult. That's that's pretty much it for the for the open bomb site if you are bunkering it. Now if you're sending out into tellers you'll want to reinforce like the tellers walls off. Probably bring a castle as well for that so you can cast off some of the windows and then you'll make a rotate back into site. But it just wastes a little more time. Finally we come to the tellers archives bomb site. Now we're going to use castle for this one because we're going to go over like an extension that you can use. So it's like a default extension, you could call it. And we can use his shotgun to still set up just as well. So you want to reinforce these two tellers walls and then castle off this door into sight. So this makes it so the attackers actually have to vault the lobby desk in order to uh, push into the site. And then they'll have to feed through this door, which is why you are going to open the bottom of the main stairs wall or the elevator hall wall or the teller's wall. Now the attackers are going to be feeding into the store unless they open this castle, of course, which is no problem because you'll have these holes as well. So now you can have a player on marble that can actually see the push in through this store. The default rotate through site is always going to be a thing on pretty much every site just because if you're only going through one door, it's very easy to cut the site in half using vertical play. So if you're only using this door and they have a, a, a sledge player above and he just makes a hole here or even anybody with a gun that just makes a hole here, you can actually watch the push through through this doorway from this hole so making an, another option in order to rotate through forces them to have multiple people to watch the rotates right that's right pox so then you'll make your rotate into small office along with these head holes here and then some head holes along here as well so now you have players that can play all the way back here and actually watch the entrances into site if they do decide to tear down that castle as well but we're not done there because we can make this long angle even longer by opening up the kitchen wall as well. So there you go. You can see all the way to that castle. You can see all the this door. These holes are a lot easier to make with like the mute or smoke shotgun just because the shorty isn't ideal. But I wanted to show you guys the castle placements as well, which is why uh, I am doing this for you here. These holes you can honestly make on any site. Even if you're a roamer and you just want to put some pressure on attackers trying to get into open, that's a good way to do it. So then you'll castle off this double door to kitchen, and you'll also want to reinforce these three kitchen walls. So you reinforce those, and then you'll actually make some head holes along here. So now, as the castle, you have these super long angles that watch all the way back into site. You can see uh, the door to site if they're doing like that lobby style push. So you have a lot of long angles that you can get those headshots on and just pick people off from here if they're not clearing you out. Now, if they're clearing you out instead of doing the lobby take, you can make your way over here and actually hold like angles into square. So if they're just trying to run into square and run into site, this is a good way to stop like a rush or if they're just coming down square or whatever it may be. And that's why you'll also want to reinforce this wall because then you can play here with cover, you can waste time, and then eventually you'll just fall off into sight and give them that control. Once you fall back to sight, you still have other options, right? You can still use these holes against them because you've made them and they don't know exactly how they work. You can actually have support from sight on the push in through open. So these holes go both ways, but really just aren't favorable for the attackers. So now let's go back to this marble setup for a second. You have these holes, right? You can look into the teller's office, the teller's desk, but you'll kind of want to be able to move between this hallway. So reinforcing off the loan office walls is also really good, as well as a castle here. Now, of course, you don't need castle, but the castle does make it a little a little nicer. Opening up this elevator hatch is also going to be good so that your teammates can drop out, etc. And then you kind of have this weird middle floor extension thing. So where the attackers are pushing, you kind of give that up and then play off where they haven't been pushing, right? So at this point, you use eight reinforcement, you have two more. Getting the two open hatches is gonna be the where the last two will end up. So this just stops them from dropping into open, like if it's just a sledge solo taking the top, he can't just drop into open and shoot you in the back as you're playing these positions. So opening these up, or sorry, reinforcing these off, just a nice little touch to, to end the strategy. Now, of course, this is a very complex setup. This isn't gonna be your, your typical setup and not everyone will know uh, how to do it or how to play it. So really once you get into 
higher ranks this is probably where you're going to be want to be playing this site and of course you're not going to have the time to set this all up on your own as castle that took me like five minutes to set up all that and reinforce the walls so ideally if you're playing castle here you're just throwing down your castles maybe making a few lines of sight and then you have like a smoke or a mute um to make all the other rotates and then hopefully your teammates can reinforce what you ask so if you can remember all this stuff and get your teammates coordinated enough to actually set this up this is a really really good hold now that being said uh, it's, I'm not sure how effective it will be depending on your rank and depending on your region. So if that's the case and you don't want to run the setup, maybe you just reinforce these three off for simplicity's sake. You reinforce the two teller's walls, you reinforce the other two teller's walls, and then you kind of play either vertical so you can roam up top and make holes above for the site, for the for the plants and stuff. You know, you can make holes above, above the printer, waste time if the attackers do want to clear it out, and then you can kind of use these holes a little higher for nitros for plant maybe have some holes in the wall like this and then you can just sit here and throw your nitro over at the plant whatever it may be so there are multiple different ways to play this site uh like i mentioned before but you kind of just have to roll with whatever your teammates are willing to do and that's that's the biggest lessons of this all be fluid you know learn new stuff you don't always have to be the guy that's in charge of setting up stuff. Sometimes it's better just to learn from your teammates and say, hey, what, what, what do you guys want to do? And then maybe you can uh, add a few plays to your playbook and become a better player. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. And, and peace out.